Hello, and thank you for coming. Um, I want to thank DP Review for having me here. And um, I want to talk about something that's really important to photography, uh, and that's the idea of passion. To me, passion is something that is intrinsic in the arts and very important in creating photos because it allows you to take things beyond just a standard snapshot or photo and turn something into what I consider more of a photograph, something that is more compelling. Um, to start things off, let's go ahead and ask the question of what is passion, okay? Now, by definition, passion is a strong and extravagant fondness, enthusiasm, or desire for something. So I think everyone here can say that we're passionate about something, okay? For myself, my family. This is my four-year-old son, Jack. I travel five, six months out of the year, and every chance I get, I want to spend time with my family. I'm very passionate about my son. I love photographing him. I love spending time. I got a phone call earlier today that he was at the park and wanted daddy to be home. I had to give him a call and talk to him and said that maybe tomorrow when I get home, but, but not just yet. But regardless, everything I do around, uh, everything that wraps around my family is wrapped around that idea of love and passion. Now, what's some other things that we're passionate about? I think a lot of people will say sports, all right? And this happens on both sides of the fence, from athletes that are willing to push themselves through torturous physical activities, as well as for fans. Now, I'm from Boulder, Colorado, and I'm a fan of the Broncos, or at least I was till a couple Super Bowls ago, and I don't know if any of you guys know, know why that happened. But regardless, people get very enthusiastic about sports. They love it. They, 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 they put everything into it. We have Super Bowl parties and tailgating parties, and, and athletes like this individual is um, you know, in freezing waters in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and, and they just love what they're doing. Cooking. That's another thing that I think people are, are very passionate about. My wife loves cooking. She loves making food. She loves creating different types of things. I totally think that the culinary arts is a true art form. Um, I myself, I love eating, not so much the cooking. Uh, barbecue I can probably handle a little bit. But regardless, people are, are cooks and chefs and people that enjoy, enjoy food, enjoy cooking. And in doing so, they're, they add a little something extra into what they do. And to me, that makes a big difference. Now, I'm pretty sure that I'm safe to say that everyone here and everyone that's watching on live streaming you are passionate about photography. I, I think unless you ended up wandering into the wrong stage or into the wrong expo, uh, checked out the wrong live streaming, everyone here is passionate about the art of photography. Where you, you know, for some of us, it is a creative outlet that allows us to express ourselves unlike ever before. For some people, it's an excuse to get outside and see more of nature and to see things that we might not ever we, we, we thought possible. But the interesting thing is that passion for photography is one thing. There's a difference when you start talking about the different verticals of photography and how passion comes into play in those different pass, uh, pieces as well. So I want to make a quick segue over from talking about passion to talking about what makes an image unique, OK? What is it that makes an image sp special? Now, when we look at this image of uh, the Skogafoss waterfall in Iceland uh, that I took a couple of years ago. There's a lot of different aspects, a lot of different variables that we can talk about in order to say, okay, hey, this is a, a beautiful photo. Maybe it's the composition. Maybe it's the subject matter. Maybe it's my choice of exposure and how I chose to have a long, you know, to, to capture the movement of the water or darken certain elements. Or maybe it's even post-processing, how I kind of pulled all the different variables together. And at the end of the day, I think the thing that makes a photo truly unique is not, it, I don't want to say it's not necessarily those variables. Those variables are important. But the thing that separates a photo from a photograph, some, uh, the thing that allows an individual to kind of stand in wow and in awe of a photograph, to me, is when an artist becomes a part of the art. And what I mean by that is that when you truly love what you're doing, you pay more attention to the details. You're being more meticulous about what you're doing. You care more about the different types of things that you are photographing. And ultimately, this comes into play in all the different genres of photography that's out there. 
And the reason that we're talking about sharing your passion through photography during this talk is because those different elements play a large role in allowing us to create what I feel ends up being more compelling photography. So I can't speak for everyone here. I'm sure if I uh, ask everyone to raise your hands, everyone's interest across the board uh, would be all across the board. Maybe people would be interested in sports photography, or maybe people would be interested in the landscape, or, or macro, or whatever it is. But I can't talk about myself and talk about what I focus on as a photographer. And in terms of marketing labels, I'm a landscape, travel, and humanitarian photographer. And essentially what that means is I photograph almost everything outside of a studio and, and outside of any events or standard portraits. Um, I'm outdoors a lot, I'm working in remote areas, and I wanna talk a little bit about each of these different genres and kind of break down a little bit of how passion comes into play to allow me to not only love what I do, but to work through the challenges that each of these different verticals in terms of photography genres face. So we're talking about landscape first. So this image is from the Tunnel View uh, Lookout Point in Yosemite Valley. I grew up in the Bay Area. This is a beautiful, wonderful place just a couple hours away. And Yosemite Valley, for a number of people, are, is essentially one of the most beautiful places in, in the world uh, in terms of, of natural uh, formations. And for me, as a landscape photographer, I love every minute of being outdoors. I love being out in the cold. I love waking up early. I love staying up late. Like these things are not deterrents for me because I love what I do. I love being outside and finding solitude in nature or finding beautiful ways to capture a scene like this that has been photographed millions of times and try to come up with something a little bit unique. As I mentioned, I really don't mind the cold. A lot of the times I'm working in pretty extreme environments. Um, this past year, I was working up in uh, the Canadian Rockies uh, during some of the polar vortexes, and a couple times when I was outdoor photographing, uh, it was negative 47 degrees. And for a lot of people, that's a big deterrent. And it's not necessarily for everyone. I get it. I totally do. But for me, I love it. I love being out there, even when I'm cold, even when I'm shivering, even though when like, you know, the first onset of you know, mini frostbite is happening. Like, I, love, I love those aspects of it. And so those, those areas... Those variables don't affect my ability to, um, to really put myself into my work in those scenes. They're not deterrents anymore. And the interesting thing about this photograph, as well as the one I'm going to talk about next, is I spent a couple weeks in Iceland um, earlier this past year. And I go multiple times. Iceland's one of my most traveled places. And I was doing some work on one of the glaciers, and we were ice climbing. And as I was propelling into one of the areas, there was a very gentle grade, and my crampons clipped. And essentially, I started sliding. And it was a gentle slide. I wasn't worried as it was happening. I knew eventually I was going to stop. It wasn't going to be catastrophic. But the thing that happened was that um, because I was holding onto the rope as we were rappelling in, I had my ice axe, and I had put it into my harness. And as I was sliding down, uh, this, this small grade on this uh, glacier to get to an ice cave, not necessarily this ice cave, but an ice cave, uh, the ice axe caught a lip of ice and essentially jettisoned into my ribs and broke two ribs. And I was about probably a mile into the glacier. So not only did I have two broken ribs, I had to then hike out and uh, deal with a nice bumpy car ride and then eventually uh, deal with a nice bumpy plane ride, and then I get back uh, to Colorado, where I call home. And two weeks later, I was planning a return trip to Iceland. And as a professional photographer that has clients and projects and things I work on, I couldn't put it off. So when I took this photo of this ice cave, crystal ice cave in Iceland, I was doing so two weeks after I'd broken two ribs, hiking back into the glacier, getting back into a, a, a place or a spot that I really was dying to photograph, and, and took this image. And throughout the time, and the help of probably a little bit of Vicodin and a handful of other different things, um, that didn't, again, it didn't deter me. Now, this image um, is another story like that. This is talking about uh, how photography is more of a contact sport than people may think. Um, this image is, was taken on the top of Grandfather Mountain in North Carolina. 
and there was a uh, beautiful fog rolling in the valley. And I was there with a friend who happened to be an ex-army medic, which came into play in the continuation of my story. And we were up on the top of this place that was open specifically for me to be out there. And um, I was kind of hurrying to get to a place and some of the rocks were slippery. I ended up um, catching one of the rocks wrong and um, got that, which you can't see. It ended up being a gash that was about two inches, two inches wide. And not to gross anyone out, but you could see down to the bone. Um, and I was in a little bit of shock at first when it happened. I, I didn't magically just be like, oh, it's not a big deal. I was kind of like, okay, need to figure this out. You know, laid there for a little bit. My friend came over, dressed the wound. And, you know, we were like, oh, well, we need to get back. You know, we, we should probably get this looked at. I know I'm gonna have to have stitches. I ended up having to have nine. And uh, I had like a lens cloth wrapped around it. And then there was like gauze around it. It was, it was, it was, it was wonderful. And essentially we got up and I stopped feeling dizzy. And I was like, you know what? Looked around and it was still one of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever seen. Like the color was still beautiful. The fog was still rolling in. And I was like, you know what? Let's just wait about 30 minutes. Let's just, you know, give me a little bit of time. And so when I took this photo, I was in a little bit of pain and there was blood dripping down my arm. Um, but again, coming back to the passion, I was, I was so enthralled, which is how beautiful the scene was, that I felt compelled to stay and to finish it out. Um, uh, these, these, these physical um, altercations, these issues that happened, weren't taking me away from my joy of these things. And this doesn't happen all. These are two stories back to back. I don't like fall everywhere I go. Um, but it is important to sit there and say, you know, with landscape photography, doing this type of stuff, you're, you're going to, to perilous locations and things happen. Um, it's important to make sure that you, you love what you do. And, and to me, I do. Now, continuing this on, I love travel. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people here love the idea of travel, and we'll talk about that in a second. But the reason I got into photography is because I love travel. It was because I love the notion of stepping outside my comfort zone and visiting cultures and places that I knew, knew very little about or that were very contrasted to my ways of life. Uh, Jordan is a wonderful place. Um, unfortunately, it's surrounded by a lot of turmoil these days, but it's a very safe country. The Bedouin people are very are phenomenal. Um, uh, the, the religion of, of Islam taught out there is, is, is wonderful. It's a very progressive country. Um, and the idea of traveling to places like this is, is what originally got me into the idea of photography. And the same thing for places like Myanmar. This is a picture of a monk and in a, the area known as Bagan, which has thousands of stupas and temples around. And you know, the idea of this atmosphere and this place, this scene that is very foreign to so many people, the idea of this kind of almost mystic-like nature of, of these unique exotic locations is, again, what, what drew me in. And the interesting thing about travel photography is that a lot of people see it like this. So this is taken in, in Angkor Wat, um, a photographing in, in Bayan temples, and it's wonderful, it's, it's perfect for social media, it's a nice marketing photo. But people don't think about the other challenges that travel photography brings with it. Uh, it doesn't tell the story of how I've had Giardia five times, or that I've had malaria, or that I've gotten sick on most of the continents out there. And because of this, uh, I have a very good immune system nowadays, and so very little things affect me anymore. But I had to work through all those different things. So when people think about travel photography, they love the idea of it, um, but sometimes when the reality sets in, it's a bit too much for everyone. Uh, the same thing can be said for um, humanitarian photography. I know a lot of photographers, and we'll certainly talk about this in a second, they really want to give back. They want to find a way to do something with their creative art form. Um, but the reality is, is that the humanitarian world comes with its own bag of, of challenges. You know, everyone wants to give back, but it's a little bit different when you're working in Haiti shortly after the earthquake, it's a village outside of Port-au-Prince, there's not all this stuff going on, or you can be in places like Tacloban. And I was in Tacloban four days after Typhoon Yolanda had hit. I was working on a project in Thailand, and I happened to obviously hear of this impending storm, made some phone calls, talked to some local photographers, had some connections in the Filipino military, and essentially was able to reroute my flights and landed in uh, Cebu, Philippines, and connect with uh, two local photographers, and essentially we boarded a supply ship, which is the only way to get into Tacloban at the area. And we spent a week traveling around Tacloban, documenting the different stories of the challenges that we're facing of the tens of thousands of people that died. We worked with special um, firemen units out of Manila, literally pulling out bodies for a number of different days. Um, 
this type of stuff isn't necessarily for everyone. And I'm not saying these things to scare anyone away. I'm simply saying that I am passionate about this type of work that I do. And because of that, I'm able to transcend past these different challenges that typically um, uh, might turn other people off them. Oh, that was back. Let's go forward. And the same thing, again, with uh, further humanitarian work, working with kids, uh, people that are in need, poverty, all these things bring out these different types of challenges. Um, but if you truly love what you do and if you truly are passionate about this type of work, then you find ways to cope with it. You find ways to deal with the emotion, to deal with the pain, to deal with other different facets that might arise for wanting to pursue different avenues or different genres of photography. And the important point out of all of this, outside of the fact that passion helps you transcend and move past these challenges, is that passion fosters creativity. When you're truly passionate about something, you're truly passionate about something, um, you, you, again, you put a piece of yourself into your work. You care more about what you're photographing. And the reason I bring this up is landscape photographers, for example, it's a challenging market for a lot of photographers to work in these days, especially those trying to make a living. And a lot of photographers are having to resort to shooting weddings, because uh, weddings, there is some money if you can find some clients. But a lot of wedding photographers, their passion and their heart is in landscape work, or X, whatever it is, but they have to shoot weddings to get by. And when I look at their work, for the most part, I can pretty much tell if they're passionate about it or if they're just doing it essentially to allowing them to do something else. And to me, that makes a big difference. As a professional, as a creative, as an artist, I always want to continually to try to photograph things that I love, things that I'm passionate about, things that give me drive, because I feel that my work is exceptionally better when I care. So my advice to everyone is to let your passions lead you. I know it sounds pretty self-explanatory. You should do things that you love to do. You should implement aspects of your interest and your passions into your passion of photography. Um, but it is important to talk about. So my wife loves gardening. Um, some of you may do. Maybe you're green thumbs and you love being out there in the Pacific Northwest. You're growing lots of different things. Maybe it's, it would be a good time to rent a macro lens and get out into your passion of gardening and try to implement some of your passion of photography into it. You never know, you might be inspired by it. Or maybe you love travel. Uh, this is a photo of, um, of Dubai and that's the Burj Khalifa, the tallest uh, building in the world, or at least was, I think. And for me, I got invited to the UAE to do a project with Microsoft uh, for a product announcement they were doing in Abu Dhabi and I spent a couple extra days. And a lot of you that are not doing this professionally might be in the same situation where you have a regular job and you travel to some form or fashion. It you know, might be interesting to bring your camera along and try to dedicate a little bit more time to making something that you're doing uh, make you care a little bit more about it, make you put a little bit, again, more of yourself into you, to this type of work. Or maybe you love the outdoors. Here in the Pacific Northwest, I used to live up here, although up in British Columbia, um, you know, there, there's so many wonderful, amazing things to see. And for a lot of us, I think the outlet of photography allows us to essentially um, combine those passions of, of being outdoors and of, um, of, of kind of getting out of our, our daily lives. You know, for one of the reasons I switched to the mirrorless system, I currently work, um, I work with Sony. The reason I switched to Sony mirrorless is because I was sick of carrying so much camera gear. And being lighter allowed me to spend more time out in the field to go further, do more remote stuff. And that to me was a deciding factor when I initially made that switch, where I was like, I wanna, I wanna do more of these things. I don't wanna go back to the Himalayas and Everest region and carry 55 pounds of gear anymore. It was getting old. So I don't have too much time left, but I wanna continue, to continue on and talk about uh, passion projects. This is the, what we're looking at right now is more so to emphasize the stuff we talked about before. This is the photo actually when it was, negative 47 degrees. Um, eyelids were freezing, um, but it was still, still quite worth it. So the value of a passion project. Um, essentially, passion projects for, when I, when I first got into photography, one of my big breaks was working for National Geographic when I was um, two or three years into picking up my first digital camera. Got very lucky, very fortunate, and essentially the lesson that I pulled out of it was the fact that, um, that, that every single National Geographic photographer had some sort of passion project. Some sort of project where they didn't care of any monetary value, they weren't doing it for fame, they were doing it because they were passionate about, about, 
um, about photography. And for a year, I spent some time working with National Geographic, teaching photography for their student expedition program. And that essentially allowed me um, to see beautiful places, but it really taught me the importance of the challenges that face travel. And one of those are the fact that travel is very, um, it, it's, there's, there's a lot of illusions wrapped around travel, and we never really know where our money is going when we travel. To me, that was a big thing. I want to support local communities. The other thing was the superficial nature of travel, where everyone is walking around with a guidebook saying, stand here, shoot here, do this. And the other thing was the humanitarian uh, aspect of things, where we want to give back, but the fact of the matter is, is that humanitarian organizations are... Um, uh, intrinsically have challenges faced where they're not all um, they're not they're not all truly supporting things a lot of the time they are creating cycles of dependence rather than empowering local individuals and so what I did about it was I started an organization called the giving lens and essentially what it does is it it, it um, connects the idea of photo education and the power of photography with giving back to local communities and oops. And so essentially what we've done is we take trips of photographers of various different skill sets uh, to developing countries where we've partnered with local NGOs that support various causes. It could be clean drinking water projects, women's rights, species preservation, all sorts of things. And each of these trips actually act as a fundraiser where the money goes back to the local communities that we're working in. And this allowed me to control a lot of these aspects where, we're, where because we're connected with local NGOs at a personal level, we're able to work through that superficial nature of travel where people are seeing the same things, not really understanding the true nature of how, um, uh, of, of causes or issues that are, are facing these places. We know where our money is going because we're donating it directly to these local NGOs. And we're, we're able to offer these unique experiences in a way that no one else can. And because of this, we have a very unique approach to how we work with NGOs in the sense where we go into the question sitting there and saying, uh, go into the equation saying, how can we help, not this is what we do. And for a quick example, because I'm pretty much out of time now, uh, is essentially in Tanzania, we work with a couple different organizations, and some of the time we spend working with families with HIV, sitting in their homes, talking to them about the challenges and the things that they, they face, the stigmas and all sorts of things. But we're also gonna spend a couple days working with the Maasai, living in the Bomas, getting a true sense of what it's like for these, uh, these tribal people. And then there's always some sort of end photographic element where we're also gonna spend a couple days in the Serengeti, or when we're in Peru, we go to Machu Picchu, um, things like that. So there's a little bit for everyone, but again, the idea is to offer a tangible experience that allows you to truly make a difference for local communities that you're working in. And we have a trip coming up for Cambodia where I think we actually had a couple spots open, which is why I bring it up. We work with a wonderful organization called the Anjali House, and um, essentially it's a youth education program where we have um, combined learning where we teach photographers from our professionals that are there in the field working with the people and the participants that have come with us as well as the youth in Cambodia that have this photography program so you're kind of doing uh, you're learning as you go and you're learning out there in the fields and these unique experiences along the way and that's the giving lens I saw something that was a challenge that was an issue that I was passionate about it and I did something about it in order to hopefully affect some sense of change allowing photographers to work through the issues and the challenges that face me as a professional and um, hopefully start to make a little bit of a difference. And that's actually it. So. Thank you.